Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to this channel. My name is Esther and I'm a law lecturer. In this video, I'm going to talk about the contract for export or importation. You have your potatoes, your sweet potatoes or your yams as you can see in this picture and you want to send them abroad for export. You want to send them to Europe or to Asia or you want to import products from abroad. You want to import tiles from China or you want to import a Mercedes Benz from China. How do you do that? So this video is meant for students who are doing the Bachelor of International Business, BIB, and they want to learn about importation or exportation. I hope you are able to follow the video and to understand the content. So how is this importation done or how is this exportation done? So we have our potatoes, our mimonde, and we want to send them to Europe, okay? So we are, what, is, what usually happens is you enter into an international contract with a buyer or a seller in Europe. You, there's a nick in Europe and you send your potatoes to nick to export them. But you enter into an international contract of export with nick or on the flip side, if you want to import a Mercedes pen from Singapore, you enter into an international contract with someone in Singapore, with a seller in Singapore. But before we do that, what is a contract? When we say contract, we are really talking about your negotiating, your bargaining, your agreeing with the Nick in Singapore or with the Chan in, in, in Europe, telling him that, you know, send me the items or I send you my items and, and you enter into an international transaction. You're buying or selling something from abroad. And usually when this is happening, they use what we call international contracts or INCO terms. We're going to talk a lot more about this. So you enter into international contracts with this person that you want to sell or to buy to and those contracts are the ones that guide the discussion between the two of you or the terms and conditions and the duties and responsibilities between the two of you so this video is going to focus on the international contracts that are concluded when you're importing something from abroad or when you're exporting something from abroad we're going to look at the role of the seller and the role of the buyer in the different international contracts that you enter into So the most common terms or international contract terms used are the INCO terms, INCO, I-N, international contract terms. They're the ones that are used when you, tell, when you enter into a transaction with someone abroad to buy or sell something. You usually tell them we are going to use the INCO terms. When you say the word INCO terms, you're automatically referring to standard terms that are used. Now you have to specify what type of INCO terms because there are so many types of INCO terms. In this video, I'm only going to discuss the most common INCO terms, two of them. One is the CIF contract INCO term and the other is the free on board or the FOB INCO term. I'm going to go into details on the responsibilities of the buyer and the seller of these INCO terms. But like I've said, there are very many INCO terms, but these are just the most common to use, especially by Ugandans, because we are a landlocked country and we are importing our goods through usually Nairobi and Mombasa, I mean usually Momba, through Mombasa, and bringing the goods by water, by sea. To Mombasa and then we drive them by road to Uganda. So these are the common two that are used by Ugandans when they are exporting or importing. I'm particularly talking about um, sea and road transport. Of course, Ugandans also use air transport. They sell flowers by air transport. I'm not talking about air carriage yet. I'm simply talking about the terms used when you're selling or buying goods and your goods are going by sea through Mombasa. So we'll start with the discussion of the CIF contract. And by CIF, we are talking about the cost, insurance, and freight. In other words, if you're importing tiles from China, for example, and the seller in China tells you that you're going to pay me 40,000 shillings CIF Mombasa, it means that the package he's giving you, or the 40,000 shillings you're paying, includes the C cost, of the tiles, buying the tiles themselves, insuring the tiles because they must be insured as they are coming to Uganda, and the freight, the cost of the tra transportation or the freight. So when you say CIF Mombasa, we're talking about the package or the price you as the buyer are going to pay is a price that involves the cost, the insurance, and the freight or the transportation. So what is the responsibility of the exporter or the person selling to you, the seller?
His responsibility in a CIF contract is first of all to invoice you, to send you the invoice. They'll send it to you wherever you are by email. And then they buy the goods for you from the tile guys who are selling their local tile guys in China. And they put those goods onto a transporting mechanism. They transport the goods to you. So they put those goods onto a ship for, that, for the goods to come to you. CIF Mombasa and your responsibility starts when the goods arrive in Mombasa so the seller has the responsibility to put these goods onto the transportation mechanism that he feels will work for you and those goods must be transported to their final destination so the seller is the one who chooses the vessel or the ship that is going to be used and it is you who t tells the seller where you want the goods to go which is Mombasa the seller in a CIF contract also must arrange for insurance who is going to insure the goods. So it, the, insu the seller takes out the insurance for the goods and then eventually sends you the invoice, the relevant documents, the invoice, the bill of lading and the insurance policy. It is the responsibility of the seller to sell or to send them to you because that is what you're going to use. Those documents are the ones you're going to use to present to the port authorities in Mombasa to show that you're the actual owner of the goods. So further in the cost insurance and freight contract, Incotam, um, delivery of documents to the buyer shows that the goods have been delivered. This is the most important aspect of the CIF contract. Once the goods, once the documents of the goods have been delivered to you, once you get the, the bill of lading, the invoice and all those documents, insurance documents, once you receive those documents, it shows you have received the goods. In law, transfer of property or ownership or legal ownership happens as soon as those documents have been received. So the seller, as soon as the seller puts the goods onto the ship, they procure the documents with the shipping company and those documents are sent to you, usually via DHL or any other company of that kind, and those documents are received by the buyer. Once the buyer receives the documents, end of discussion property or legal ownership has passed and those documents are the ones that represent the goods so when the documents have been received what does it mean it means that the goods are now at the risk of the buyer should any damage or any problem happen the goods belong to the buyer or it is the buyer who bears the responsibility for addressing the loss of those goods because they no longer belong to the seller because you have received the documents. It also means that the seller is entitled to be paid. As soon as they get their documents to the buyer, the seller must be paid. And we're going to discuss in my next videos one of the ways in which the sellers are, are, are paid. So, or more on the cost and insurance and freight contract, number seven, if no place is mentioned for the delivery of the documents, because remember, delivery of documents symbolizes delivery of the goods. So if you, you as the buyer have not mentioned where those documents must be delivered, then the seller must deliver them to your residence or to your place of business. And it is the duty of the exporter or the seller to meet all the th issues that concern exportation, the exportation tax, to arrange for all those things. It is the exporter because you as the buyer, you're using the CIF contract, you're not getting involved and the price or the package the seller gives you involves everything to get the documents and the goods to you until they reach Mombasa. So that is the responsibility of the seller or exporter in the CIF contract. So why is the CIF contract popular? Why is it popular in Uganda and in many countries, especially countries that move goods by sea? One of the reasons it's popular is because the seller is able to charge a higher price. Because remember, his price is including the cost, the insurance and the freight. So he's able to put up a mark on, on whatever he's charging and gives him more profit at the end of the day because he's the one who gets the commission for getting an insurance person. He's the one who gets the commission for getting the freight person. So that gives the seller an interest in the CIF contract. The sellers also like the contracts because they, they, they are able to be paid before the goods actually arrive. It takes about three months maybe from when you order for the goods, when they set them off to arrive to your place in your destination Mombasa. 
so the goods can be sent within a week of order everything is organized and finished and is sent within a week but the goods will not arrive until three months so the seller likes the cif because it gets paid as soon as you receive the documents because remember we said in the cif contract receiving documents symbolizing receiving the symbolizes receiving the goods so the seller gets paid right away even though the goods have not yet actually physically arrived now the buyers or the importers like the cif because they don't have to get into the nitty-gritty of looking for the insurance company and looking for the freight company or the transporters. You can imagine you're in Uganda and you have to find out who is going to now transport the goods for me from China and which insurance company should I contract in China to bring the goods to Uganda. So the CIF is good for me as a buyer because I just have to pay one lump sum price and it's a seller to hustle and find me the insurers and the transporters. Also, the buyers don't like the CIF contract because you don't have to bear the risk of transport costs changing. Whereas it's the seller enjoys the fact that he makes a markup or profit on getting the transporter for you. But for you, you're not bothered by any change in transport costs, any change in insurance. All those are not your risk because you know what? For you, you have paid the seller to deal with all that. So that is why the buyers like the CIF. And really, that is why the CIF is very popular, especially in countries like Uganda. So these are the duties of the seller. This is a summary of the duties of the seller or the exporter. What are they responsible for? They must supply the goods according to the description of the contract. What he agreed to is what he has to supply. They must prepare and deliver the export documents because remember we said once you receive those documents, they symbolize that you've received the goods. So it's a duty of the seller in China to organize those documents for you. They must check, mark, and pack and deliver the goods to the vessel. They are the ones who go to the car shop in China, buy those tiles, and then take them by themselves to the vessel. So they incur the transportation costs from that car shop to the vessel or the ship that is bringing the goods. They incur the cost of loading those goods from the truck that brings them from the car shop and loading those goods onto the vessel. That is still the cost of the seller. They also, they also incur the cost of transporting those goods, the shipping, getting the shipping line and bringing those goods either through three-way shipping company or DHL or Transami. There are several shipping lines that are used. It is a duty of the seller to contract that shipping line and the goods arrive to you. So the loading costs, number five, the loading costs, those are costs of the seller. You know, you use a crane to load those goods from the truck that brings them to the ship and onto the ship. That crane is paid for and it is the seller to pay for that crane. Then after that, the seller must inform the buyer that I have put the goods onto the ship or onto the vessel. And then they must pay the transport charges to the destination CIF Mombasa. They pay the destination to the, the, the they pay for the goods until they reach Mombasa. It is a seller to carry out or to get the export license if that is required and to clear all export custom procedures because it is him who knows his country in China. It is a seller who knows how China operates. So that is a duty of the seller to carry out all the export procedures unless of course you contract and agree otherwise. And the seller bears the risk of those goods until the goods are loaded onto the ship. After they are loaded onto the ship, the insurance company takes over the risk of the goods. But if any damage happens to those goods while they are being moved from their small shop to the ship, it is the responsibility of the seller to compensate or repair or put those goods to the actual quality that they need to be brought to your destination, which is Mombasa. So in brief, these are the duties of the seller. This is what the seller is responsible for in this kind of contract, in the CIF contract. Now I want us to look at the responsibilities and duties of the buyer. You as the buyer, what is your role in this contract? So we've talked about the duties of the seller. Now we need to talk about the duties of the buyer. You who is importing, what is your responsibility? One, you must pay for the goods. You must pay the price, the CIF price, the total package. As soon as you receive the documents, you're required to procure the payment process to pay the guy, the seller, for sending the goods through the documents. Remember, we said when you receive the documents, you receive the goods. So you must pay as soon as you get the documents. The second duty is you must name the port of destination. Where are these goods supposed to be delivered? CIF what? Is it CIF Mombasa? CIF Ginger? CIF Kampala? You must state where the goods must be delivered. It is also the duty of the buyer to take delivery. Once the goods have actually physically arrived, 
that, that the buyer must get them from Mombasa. You must take delivery. You must also take delivery of the documents because delivery of documents is delivery of goods in law. And then it is the duty of the buyer to cater for all importation procedures and licenses. If there is any importation stamp duty, whatever, that is the responsibility of the buyer. The buyer must cover all that and it is a cost of the buyer. Sorry about the lighting. Um, power has gone. This is Uganda. Anyhow, this is a summary of the, uh, the CIF contract. I got this image from international commercial terms dot guru online and I thought it explained very well um, the process of the CIF contract. So let us go through this summary briefly so that you understand the summary of how the CIF contract works. So here you find that this is the industry, like a small shop where you're buying your tiles, whether it is China, Singapore, or where you're buying your Mercedes Benz that you want to import into Uganda. So this is the shop. So the seller's duty is to get, as you see, this yellow part. That is the seller's duty. The seller's duty is to buy these tiles, put them onto this truck. All this is the cost of the seller and the responsibility of the seller. It is the seller to contract this truck guy and they bring them to the port, the port that is going to ship, where the ship sits for loading. So the seller incurs the cost of putting the goods off the truck and using this crane to load that goods from where they are sitting on the port onto the ship. So all these are costs of the seller, the responsibility of the seller. And it is a seller's duty until the goods reach the ship. So when the goods are on the ship of the reach the ship, the seller's duty ends. And at this point, the documents are procured and they are sent to the buyer. When the buyer receives the document, the buyer now takes over responsibility of the goods. The seller is no longer responsible. So any damage that happens to these goods anywhere here, even if they are being lifted and they drop and break, it is the responsibility of the seller to replace these goods. Now, the buyer's responsibility starts from the moment the goods are received by form of documentation. So the buyer gets the goods when they receive the documents, yes, we said. But now here in the crane, you see that once the goods have arrived at Mombasa at their destination, the seller takes these goods off the crane. Using the crane, they are taken off and they are put down. These costs are costs of the buyer. The buyer is responsible for all the importation processes, all the costs of loading and, and unloading from the ship those are costs of the buyer so here we see as you see the blue part that's the buyer's obligation everything at the port of destination is a responsibility of the buyer the buyer takes over responsibility so this is how the, the cif contract works so for the case of uganda which is landlocked or randa Burundi, all those other countries once the goods arrive at mombasa the cif contract mombasa has finished and has concluded you now have to contract your own guy or your separate transporter to carry the goods by road from mombasa to kampala or to bujumbura or to randa whichever you prefer so this is the cif contract in summary so what are the remedies in law for a buyer who's not pleased you're not happy with the with with the processes or what has been done by your seller abroad what remedies do you have in law as a person under the cif contract one of the remedies you have the right to reject the goods you have the right to reject the goods or the documents and by rejecting the documents if the documents don't satisfy the requirements of what the document should look like or they have information that is wrong wrong quantities wrong quality or the marks of the goods that have been put on the documents are not proper you as a buyer are entitled to reject the documents and once you reject the documents you've rejected the goods so the buyer has a remedy or a solution in law to reject the documents and goods but you also have the remedy to sue for damages damages for failure to be given the proper documents damages for failure to deliver the bright goods Damages for late shipment, the goods were shipped late or the, 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 the seller reached late and the ship was leaving. Or damages for giving you defective goods. All these are remedies in law under the CIF contract for 
the buyer. Of course, the seller also has remedies in law in a, in, in a situation where the seller has sent the right documents and the goods have been shipped and the buyer has not paid on delivery of the documents. The seller can sue you, the buyer, for the price, for the goods, what you are supposed to pay, the contract price. But it can also sue for damages, compensation for you to refuse refusing to accept the goods. You could have refused to accept the goods. The remedy is that the buyer will be able to pay damages for refusing to accept the goods so that is another remedy that a seller has under the cif contract these are pretty much the same remedies as a seller has in any normal contract they can sue for the price and they can sue for non-acceptance so i would like to keep this video short i am therefore going to stop here um i would make another video on the FOB contract, the duties and responsibilities of the buyers and sellers in an FOB contract and I'll post that much later on. So let us first understand this and stop here. If I make it too long, you might get too tired. I hope you have understood the content. Should you be interested in getting in touch with me, you can find my email address in the notes of this video. I hope you have a good day. Thank you for watching.